Ladies and gentlemen, the press conference is formally called to order. At the table is Haru Menelik, myself, George Lopez, my brother Miguel Lawn, Attorney yes, Law, and young Sir Charles. We would like to formally sing our national anthem so as to proceed with further matters. We can we all stand our national anthem and a part of the Ethiopian anthem next. And then after that, Eru Menelik will bring prayers on us all and the country. And after that, we have a one minute silence for all Jamaican and women abroad who have suffered in any form and way from the unfair, unjust danger laws in Jamaica and any other country. Can we stand for the national? Please. Yes. 
destiny. Yes. Yes. One minute silence for all Jamaicans who have suffered from the indignity and the injustice of Ganja laws in Jamaica and wherever else. Thank you all. Thank you all. This press conference and assembly of we the Jamaican people, it's about a phenomenal time in our history in Jamaica and the rest of the world. And as such, I've conceptualized the idea of an annual celebration in tribute to our friends in Canada. I now formally declare the 17th of October 2018, and every 17th of October each year to come will be named and celebrated as. Global Ganja Liberation Day. In tribute to Canada, the Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, the government, and all the Canadians at home and abroad. Well done, all Canada, to fully legalize Ganja on the 17th of October 2018, all over Canada. And we the Jamaican people say thank you all and we will learn from Canada and how it does it and how it develop that business. And we hope our government will wake up and get the Canadians to help. If not, we will find a way to take our time, our money and our creative imagination to do Ganga business in Canada. Because legalization in Canada is for all those Canadians or non-Canadians who satisfy the laws and regulations to come and trade in business. It's a multi-billion dollar business. Canada is the first developed country to have legalized Canada. Uruguay did it a few years ago, but quite different in South America. So, we hope to use an example to learn from, to share with Canada, to get closer to Canada. Because they are ahead of us. I was a part of the original Ganja committee that was started by Minister Paul Well. And after several meetings, I got disenchanted and didn't go back. And it did that. I will also declare this book done by Marguerite Orain, Douglas Orain's sister, who was CEO, Chairman of Grace Candy. It was released here recently. I bought three copies at the release of this book, signed by the author. One I've sent to the Prime Minister of Canada as a small gift for him and his family for legalizing guns. Carry it all the way. By the way, the legalization of Ganja was a pledge he made during the election time that if he was elected, this is one of the things that he will do. And he has followed through. So it is, should have been delivered by now to Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, for him and his family. The other one is from my key, which is this. And the second one was donated to 
Woolmers alumni in Toronto, Canada. That's one of the best organized and one of the wealthier alumni associations in Canada. To make an alumni association. And one of the reasons why I did it, I didn't attend Woolmers. But my first son went to Woolmers. Woolmers was good to him, but he was twice as good to Woolmers. And he has just resigned as the president of Woolmers Alumni Association after doing his two years. I will now open the floor up for persons at the end table to make their presentation as they see it in whatever format, whatever way, and how we can benefit, how we can learn, or we can take advantage of what Canada has done for us. So, Brother Miguel Long. Well, greetings and blessings. Greetings. Thank you. Um, I really wonder, you know, that it's not that Canada is ahead of us. It's just that we have been saddled by governments here who have been very, very backward in their thinking, very schoolboyish in their behavior, and very boring and succumbing to others Why we don't go on much further, you know, and that they have used that to oppress us so many years. Um, I brought along, some of you might remember, the Ganja March which we had in 1996. And um, as you see, I've laminated this letter. This letter was addressed to me when I had written to the, to the, um, the powers that be, the police, Jamaica Constabulary Force. And with this letter, it's addressed and it says, I'm in receipt of your letter dated February 15, 1996, regarding a march in sections of the corporate era on Friday, March the 1st, 1996. And he says here, kindly be advised that the proposed route will take the march within 200 yards of several scheduled premises to include Jamaica House and Gardner House, which is prohibited by law. Hence, the route has been adjusted and approved as follows. And the route that they adjusted it to was at St. William Grand Park, up Church Street, right onto North Street, left onto Duke Street, and go up to Heroes Park, and then go up to Mandela Park. They close the paragraph, they says, the march is expected to commence at 12 midday, involving approximately 5,000 persons will be under your supervision, that's I, and must not go beyond 6 p.m. This was the biggest ganja march that we had in Jamaica. Um, yes, and what we did that, this is 1996, that's what, 18 and four, that's 22 years ago. Um, right, that's 22 years ago. I brought along a copy of a book cover which shows a picture which came out into the newspaper. This picture here, we had put it on the book cover, and this was up at half a tree where our brethren were standing with their chalice in hand. The police never said nothing. Well, what had happened that day was that we confronted the police, and we almost everyone had some form of ganja on them. Whether it was a chalice, whether it was a stick or herbs, whether it was a, 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 a tree, there were some yes. people on a tree. <laughs> some people had branches that they stick in the hair. Yeah. We challenged the police that day. It's either you arrest all of us or you free all of us. And Macmillan, Trevor Macmillan, who was the commissioner, commissioner of police, he, upon hearing, he had his, um, his officers, both those to escort us and those to spy. And he told me subsequently, when he heard of the caliber people that were on the march, 
he had to advise his police that we Rastafarians were doing something that the police are not able to do. <laughs> because we had brothers from Tivoli Gardens and the jungle marching with us, sharing their chalices. We had brothers from Nannyville and back to marching with us. We had brothers from Pienland and Majestic Gardens marching with us. And there were several others cutting across political and tribalistic and garrison lines that marched with us that day. And despite all of that, brothers and sisters, not even a bottle mash accidentally. And Mr. Macmillan told us thanks afterwards and congratulated us because he says that if we can unite all these forces, it must mean that we are doing something that the rest of the country is not able to do. So I say all of that, and that was the, the 1st of March, 1996. Don't forget that, brothers and sisters. I brought along a clipping from the newspaper. This, it came out on the 2nd of March, Saturday the 2nd of March. And it was, it described the march as the 100,000 man Rasta march. And they said here, it was weed and more weed due to the amount of ganja that we carried that day in confronting a system and says that you lock us up that day or you free ganja that day. So brothers and sisters, as you know over the years, many, many brothers, many, many sisters have been locked up, brutalized and so. It started and I brought along a copy of the Promise Key. It started with our great brother, the first announcer of the Rastafari faith, Brother Leonard Howell. And their headquarters up at Pinnacle, they used to grow ganja there. And many, many of our brothers and sisters, this is way back from the 1940s, 1950s, many of our brothers and sisters were locked up for ganja in those days. Many of them, it was not even a situation of being offered the alternative of a fine. It was just straight, in some instances, six months, nine months, 18 months, three years, depending on the quantity. So we want you to understand that. Also, another highlight was that it was claimed that the brothers and sisters who started the Coral Gardens um, uprising, it was claimed that they were under the influence of ganja. They always blame ganja. So that was the twin pillar, Rasta, ganja. When you blame Rasta, is ganja. You, you, so they use ganja to persecute Rasta parents over the years, brothers and sisters. Now, is it fear now to just simply come out and say, boy, legalize, legalize, so you can just walk with breads at this stage is two ounce, one ounce, plant five trees or so. So what about all those brothers and sisters that were brutalized, locked up, set back? All those brothers that were sent to prison for all five years, three years. When you have your queen and your family and your children and you withdraw the breadwinner, what about them? So the struggle now should be intensified in Jamaica. Because one, Rastafarian shouldn't be going through the normal channel to get expungement of records. Many Rastafarians were barred from going to school. Our young brother here, he benefited from cases that were brought to court, especially the Kirk Johnson case, which the court ordered that a uh, government school, a government school which gets support from the government, cannot bar a Rastafarian child from coming to school. And that came out in the Kirk Johnson case in about 1983. So, but many of our elders, many of our sisters, many of our brothers were even barred from going to school with their dreadlocks. So they couldn't get no employment, they couldn't get no work. So many of them go and plant little ganja. <coughs> many of them sell little ganja. So many of them have a record now, what they call a criminal record for distribution of ganja. 
for selling ganja. And they are telling you now that you will get the record expunged if it is for possession. But if it is for sale and distribution and cultivation, you have to wait some 7, 14 years and all that type of thing. We as Rastafarians now have to intensify that struggle, that all of that need to go through the window and to show greater respect for us all. I brought along also to a book. It's entitled The Holy Herbs. The cover is actually a depiction, a depiction of this picture here, which when we brought out the first book, this was how we brought it out, The Holy Herbs, and then we reprinted it, The Holy Herbs, Marijuana Sacraments, and so on. And um, this book was actually written by Jeff Brown, who, was a, who is a member of the Ethiopian Zion Coptic Church. And they are based out at White Horses there in St. Thomas. And Jeff Brown was among some other Coptics that were carrying ganja to the United States on a boat. They were arrested, they were imprisoned. And whilst Jeff Brown was in prison, he said to himself, well, if I'm going to suffer feet, I might as well write, write a book on it. It's a very comprehensive book, a very, very good book. And we encourage as much people as possible to get a copy. I go further and point out that we should remember one of our outstanding brothers. He passed a few months ago. This is one of the books that he wrote, The Law Against Ganja in Jamaica written by Dr. Dennis Forsyth. Forsyth, as you know, he also wrote the book, The Healing, the Healing of the Nations, which is devoted to ganja. And he himself stood up for his principles. There's another book which he wrote. It's entitled Rastafari and the Ganja Challenge. And he brought that book and gave to me and has asked me to publish it. Um, shortly before he passed. It's a beautiful book, and we intend to publish that. So whilst we're here talking about Ganja and so, we want us to remember one of the brothers who stood up very, very strong. In fact, he preferred being locked up. He had, in a nutshell, his case came about because he had a dispute with his baby mother concerning his child. And the baby mother was withdrawing custody from him. So he decided that he was going to keep the child one weekend when he collected the child. The baby mother brought police to his house to collect the child, but when they searched his house, they found the ganja. And he pointed out to them that as a Rastafarian, he has the right to use ganja. And so on, and he says, look, well, in that case, then I prefer to be locked up, but I cannot deny my ganja. Because he used the ganja. Many people did not realize that over 20 years ago, brother, Foresight had done a heart bypass. He had an operation and did a heart bypass. And um, he therefore used ganja to heal his body for over 20 years. So, you know, I mentioned that as we go forward now. We we'll give thanks for what is happening in Canada. We're going to watch it closely to see who benefits. Because like so many other things, the sugar cane on the plantations, we were the laborers. Plantocracy and Bakramasa were the ones who get the profit. The bauxite is in the land, they came again. We were the laborers, they were the ones who made the profit from it. You understand what I mean? And we can go on and on in almost everything. We are the laborers, we get the crumbs, and certain guys get the profit. So, brothers and sisters, and we see the ganja industry shaping up that way now because the criteria to get a license is much, much too rigid. It's much too out of our sphere because when you talk about we must build 10 foot high fence with barbed wire up on top, we must have cameras on the field, we must have a drivable road that means we have to get tractor for cut road, go up to them hill there, and so on. Oh, how can we meet those criteria, brothers and sisters? And contributing to that. You know, <laughs> it only not mean that the rich alone can set up 
a plan. And again, we turn laborers and and them. And I can give you a live example because one of our members, Brother Seppi Dawes, over there in Linstead, St. Catherine, they have an organization with over 200 members. And their organization, they have put in an application for a license long before all of these people to get licensed. We get license and provisional license. Brother Seppi Dawes, some of them when they came to Jamaica, and I'm not going to call a name yet, they went to Brother Seppi Dawes to get advice. And them come, you understand what I'm saying? They went to him to get advice as to go to go about it. And they come get licensed and brought the organization over in Linstead and Babwa with over 200 or 4 members can't get licensed because, all, because they are consisting of farmers and they have minimum budget. So brothers and sisters, we give thanks for this day organized by our brother here, Brother Lopez. And, but as we go along, I have to remind you of our struggle over the years of the many brothers that have been locked up, brutalized, bust up head, trim off locks, killed, killed brothers and sisters because of Ganja. So as we go forward, we are, have to go with a wise mind, not to be too euphoric and overjoyed and lose our focus, but to know that in the new dispensation, not only with this ganja is capable of taking Jamaica out of its economic um, woes, but it can also be of great economic benefit to our Rastafarian community. Give thanks. Thank you. Brother Eru Menelik, your contribution, please. Blessed Lord. Give thanks. Blessed I. It is really good to know that I have lived to see this day. The day when a country has legalized ganja totally without any, any attachments. Ganja in Canada is legal. But I want to look back at this vicious and pernicious system that was impacted upon a people. No, God make a plant and put that plant there. And you are going to tell me as a man, you are going to pass a law to ban God plant. That was one of the most ridiculous acts that I have ever come into my consciousness as a youth. I always question it. So I did some research. Why did this plant that has been proven to be so beneficial to mankind was declared a banned and illegal substance. In, in 1815 America, we had over 8,327 ganja farmers. And each one of them, the smallest ganja farm was 2,000 acres. This is in 1850. Ganja wasn't banned until 1942 in America. That was the first place that it was banned. Now we find Randolph Hearst, a very rich publisher. And we find Harry and Slinger, an FBI, head of the FBI at that time. They concocted a scheme to say, these black people were smoking, and they used to call it the devil weed. We're smoking the devil weed and raping our white girls. Randolph Hearst was in charge of about 50 newspapers. And this is the power of the media that we have to understand why we must control media. Between himself and Harry and Slinger, they concocted that they would put on the headline of all the 50 newspapers the story that they concocted. These black men smoking the devil weed, getting crazy and raping our white daughters. And it put a panic in all the white world. They lobbied the US Senate at the time. This was in 1937. And for five years they took that lobby to the Congress until in 1942, Ganja was officially banned in America. 
one of the byproducts or many of the byproducts of ganja. We know ganja is highly medicinal. But what we did know that canvas that we, we, we know that heavy duty material was made from ganja, cannabis sativa. Hence we have canvas, an amalgamation of cannabis sativa. We also have the highest grade of paper, bonded paper, made from ganja plant. We have also oil paint that is made from the, the, the oil of the ganja. And you know with the normal oil paint you can't sleep in your room if you paint that room. When you paint it with the ganja based oil, you can sleep in a room the same night undisturbed. So it was part of the commercial value of ganja that was impacting upon the brother dear Randolph Hearst, a multimillionaire of the day, in which he said, these people, if they were allowed to come to fruition and bring this product to the marketplace, he would become bankrupt. And that is how we concocted the story with his FBI friend, Harry and Slinger. So we have to realize that this devious plot started with two persons. It took root in all of the other nations eventually because England being a part of America and the Commonwealth nations being a part of England, they had to follow suit and ban ganja. Ganja was never banned in India. Ganja was never banned in China. Ganja was never banned in, in, in parts of Africa. So we have to understand that this thing was done because of the commercial value. Not that this thing was creating any mad people and raping because white people were smoking ganja at the time. You understand? So we have to really look at it now and say, why it has taken us so long as a nation that we have done our research books have been written on it many books have been written on it to tell you but well, this is madness and to today it is still because of the commercial value of ganja why in some american states it is still a semi banned product our stooges, and I have no other name to call them, our stooges in Parliament, no matter what treaty you sign, and whether United Nations or any other nation, you have an obligation, you have a right to stand up as a man and let them know that, listen, this plant has not affected us. We have more good coming out of this plant than bad. But as I say, when you beggy beggy and you have to go to IMF and you have to go to all IDB and all of these World Bank, then you have to follow. As the old maxim, he who pay the piper have to dance the tune. So this is where we are at today, when we are just coming full circle and realizing that, listen, this is God's plan. How the hell you can ban God's plan? Why you didn't ban the cocoa plant that, 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 that make the, the opium and the other plant? Those were never banned. Those were never banned, my brothers and sisters, never. It has been legal coming right on. It was all the ganja. And we say, why? Because of the commercial value, not less. Nobody smoke more ganja than Americans right now. Even presidents tell you, say, them smoke ganja. So my brothers, as I said, I am so glad that we are at this point now and that our stooges in parliament, the Jamaican parliament, must wake up and smell the coffee and understand that justice must be served to God and to man. And many of our brothers, as Brother Miguel has said, have suffered under these laws. And we are calling for compensation. Yes. The Nuremberg Tribunal 
tell you, there's no statute of limitation for crimes against humanity. Mm. And what was done to Rastafari yeah. in Jamaica yeah. is crimes against yeah. humanity. I mean. So we have to understand that even though we have gotten to this point, the work has just started because we have to now get reparations yes. for all the damage that has been done True. to Rastafari. True. Give thanks. I will make a short comment. I have been to Africa Tree lock up when a gentleman older mate was locked up for some criminal offense. I discovered that the selling of ganja in the lockup. Selling is controlled by ganja that the police get them on and seize. And they use the other prisoners who deal to sell it to the other prisoners. But what is a fact in the lockup and also in the prison? If these men don't get them ganja for smoke, they are unmanageable inside the cell. No matter if you have one police with one gun guarding each prisoner. So they know, they know, they know. I witnessed that at half a tree lock up years ago. So, as a matter of fact, what we have here is people in parliament that are against the wishes, against our interests of the Jamaican majority population. But some of them was ministers, right? ministers who used to be smoking ganja. Yeah. Well, that, but they do not serve the population interest. And part of that reason why they get voted in, not only Banduluism, but once you brainwash educational system in basic school, primary school, and high school, what you have is slaves that do anything you want to do. And that is how this people in this country have been manipulated good and well. I will now ask the other speaker at the table, Sir Charles, to make his contribution. He's the youngest person here. He has a bright future and he has a takeover from us. So he's now being asked to learn from us and make his contribution. Thank you, Brother Lopez. And I must say, thank you in a different regard for organizing this event and you know, for having the vision to establish October 17th as the International Ganja Liberation Day. We're in a positive mood. And I want to say thank you to the other members of the panel, Benedict and, 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 and Sir Lon, for providing such background and context and you know, insights that I never had before coming to sit at this table. You know, so I, 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 really, I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, so it, it, it's, it has been a really fruitful conversation and I think that, you know, Canada making this move to, to legalize ganja fully within their country as the first developed country, as Sir John said. It sets a, a sort of precedence for the international community to move away from that history of oppression and you know, the possibilities of human rights atrocities you know, against ganja and, and, and the users of ganja. So, you know, it, it is something to celebrate. It, 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 it is something to, to commend Canada and the, and, and, and the government of Canada for. And I think in regards to how our local government, the Jamaican government, has, has treated with the issue of ganja and people who use ganja, you know, the fact that they seem to have been victims of soft power, whether it be through treaties that they have signed on to or whichever international body they are dependent on for funding. It, I think Canada making that step can sort of inspire them to develop a similar kind of political courage or political will to be able to, to move legislation in a similar direction. And I think looking to the future, a move to fully legalize ganja puts us in a greater spot to capitalize on, you know, not just the economic benefits, but research and having a, a better understanding of 
of what the herb is capable of doing. But a lot of it now is that people have a bit of what is circumstantial evidence or anecdotal instances where they cite the use of the ganja. For instance, when I was a young boy, I went to the country to visit my grandma. At the time, I was a major sufferer from asthma. And my grandmother said to my mother, What are you doing? You have the boy suffering from asthma. Give him some ganja tea, man. <laughs> and I was on ganja tea for about two weeks. And I haven't been troubled by asthma ever since. I don't know if it's pure coincidence, <laughs> but I find it remarkable that I could have had that experience. And there are many other people who can share other kinds of testimonies about you know, the, the, the power of, of, of ganja as it regards to the impact on his health. I heard Brother Miguel talk about a Bridget who used it after his heart bypass surgery for 20 years to, you know, to keep himself up. So there's a lot, there's a lot to find out. And I think that, that was the precursor to mm -hmm. asthma sal, which was one of the first products that was made by our doctors here, asthma sal. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. There we go. So, 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 so there's a lot of there, there, there's a lot of wisdom to be unlocked now. In a sense, it sort of opens up the door for a transferal from what you call folk wisdom to what they call empirical or you know the, 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 the conventional ways of proving the same thing. Because the elders always knew, you know. Yeah. <laughs> right. The elders, yeah. The elders in the community the always knew. The know we're catching up with right. 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 So I think I saw the legalization and Remove more the acceptance. Underground. Right. And therefore the research and other factors. There Very good. Go. Very good point. So it's, it, 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 it's causing the scientists and you know the more modern thinking minds to catch up to that ancient wisdom that always existed. And I think that's a positive direction, you know, when folk wisdom can meet conventional or what they call empirical wisdom. So I think it's some step in the right direction. And, you know, I really appreciate what the other two brothers shared in terms of looking at the history of ganja itself and the kinds of oppression that people have faced with its usage and to say that moving forward and, and ultimately legalizing the weed must necessitate some sort of reparations or you know, rehabilitation or recompensation for damages to people who would have you know they, who would have suffered under the previous legislation. Because if if, if law represents morality and you're saying that this thing is now no longer wrong. And it means that if you would have wronged people under previous laws, you must act in, in, in tandem with the current morality. Re repair, repair the breach. <laughs> right, right. However, you need to make Apologize. Yeah, so if it starts with apology or you know, monetary recompense yeah. or whatever forms of restoration can be done, I think that is something that must be looked at. So it, it's, a, it's looking both ways. You're looking in the mirror while you're driving forward. Give thanks. Yeah, yeah. 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 The turn of question and answers from the floor is open. Advice, comment from the floor. The floor is open, please. Uh, so move in the right direction. With, 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 with uh, as Brother Miguel said, observation, see who, how, how, how the benefits are going to be apportioned, whether or not there's a, 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 a situation where the, the people who are going to create the policy framework are going to be the same people who become the administrators of the industry. And, 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 and as you say, shape not to be like that, where you have to go to this dear institution to get a license, to research to use to market something that you really should be not to get a license with that kind of authority. We, 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 the court should have been first to compensate the people who suffer as a result of using that this, this product. And uh, and then uh, find ways in which you could do you, you, you could have the 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 the, 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 the uh, access to it without without without, without even having have a framework that it, it, it will cost you because you now you have to pay you have to pay to get a license 
You know, uh, and, uh, and what that, that is going to do is to keep it all the, the, the hands of the people who pay the, the, the original price. It's so expensive. You know? so, uh, and my brother lies, it's an annual fee. Yes. Right? Land taxes and other taxes mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And whether you're in business or not, once you sign up, as well as the company form, you're going to have to pay and get an account and submit records, whether you have records or not, and they are minimum fees. And, 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 and of course, it, uh, what, what, it go, what it is going to mean is that once you, once you it's, like, it's like you go and register an, a, a limited liability company. The moment it, it's on the books, you become, you become instantly liable for the government tax. Well, I, I don't know what the technicalities of your business restrain. But to my mind, we should come under one banner from all over the island, you know. And people who really have certain expertise on it should really become a committee so that we can all move forward to the liberation of this thing, you know. And whatever products we can make from it in a local sense, we suppose we can set up certain apparatus or whatever, machines, so that we can have the right to bring back the originality of making clothes, room, etc. from this particular product. Even to highlight to the world that there is a possibility not only in smoking marijuana and making, in making medic medicinal products, but also domestic products. So it might enhance even the small man in the woods or otherwise. Any other comment? I need to. Any other comment, please? I need to make a proposal and I'll, I'm going to ask Sir Charles to work with me to make it happen. An inspiration came to me a while ago. It says that part of the strength on the continuity is to get the young ones involved early. Learn from us and go beyond us. Really, really. I'm going to propose to Charles to work with me to develop at UTEC, where he's at, UWE, Michael, Edna Manley College, what is called Global Ganja Liberation Day Club. And that club is a club not only about ganja, but other fields. And I'll try and see how I can find funds that will be given to them separate apart from its membership and the university have to accept them as a legitimate club because it is by students at the university that are members. It should draft a constitution in which it can have outside members as well who are not students, potential students. Now, well, if Miguel wants to join the UTEC Global Ganja Liberation Day Club, it's legal for him to join and pay his fee. So I'm passing that over to Charles to work with myself and any other member from the head table to make that be a reality and a start up in September 2019. In the meantime, we can put up flyers on the notice board at UTEX. So come in soon and let people apply to our email address or whatever database. So we have a number of interested persons that we can say, look, yes get the ideas that are there so we have a big bang come the first semester in 2019. So I will talk to Charles and that but the many will also get involved and that club can bring in guest speakers I mean it, it will have a constitution for wide and broad base. right it's just that the reason for it come out of this tonight meeting. I was at UTEC on Tuesday, where they got funding to do a conference on eradicating poverty and eradicating this. And they didn't talk about eradicating rats, because rats, if you rat eat your food up, you don't have that to eat. <laughs> but I got up after a night after a UTEC doctor something from Tanzania finished speak question and answer. And I said, Doc, you see all this eradication of poverty and this thing? A lot of this is bullshit. Professional budget. You need to eradicate Parliament and MPs. <laughs> that is where the people's wealth is going. Corruption, corruption, and more corruption. There's very little people have to 
to say, you, you know, you can't help them. You can't help them. You get money on behalf of helping them. I had a friend who is a consultant in agriculture. Free money come here to do a assistant program to help the farmer grow corn better, to help the farmer with his livestock better. You know the only thing came out here, sir? The people who are have to administrate and go look and see the farmer do, and them get the money. Farmer Jack, Farmer Menelik, and Farmer Charles get encouragement and all that. We don't get none of the money for, for, for improvement. So there is no so-called better in the farmer and improve his family income. That don't happen up to now. That is the trend. That is the result. So I've asked at the conference when I've done, I've all you take to do two things I can help them with as a legacy project. One, you sat on Sunday and they facility with my help to run cooking classes for male, male classes only. So each male can be developing his own chef to look out himself. Especially when he goes overseas, you know what I'm saying? He can't just feed off a you know, bad fast food, you know, right? <laughs> Or my wife can say, boy, she strike in the kitchen and he end up being in, a, in, a, in poverty. So, and get that early. They are home to it and welcome it. So you'll have male only class and female only class. The place have a lot of available space on Saturday and Sunday. So working people, separate from schoolers, can fit in. The other thing I mentioned to them, and they are home to that, the guy who's the head of the call him the dean of the department for your several things commander, is I will work with them to get a number of African language taught at UTEC. And on Saturday and Sunday we are outside this can come. Brilliant. The commitment is the guy who the Tanzanian there who's a doctor or something, he, he, his area is in rural development, what have you. So he can put the stuff together. It will be free. People are asked to give a contribution which goes to the teacher. And we can find sponsors. You take provide the space free. Well, there's one class or two class. Guy can come on and they are community service thing. Where they help the community with volunteer work and all. So they come on and that. Right? I used to run American classes at Jamaica Culture Yard free. I also used to run Spanish classes. But I got a tutor from the Embassy of Spain. I run ads in the paper as well as I run press releases. A woman from JCBC, what director, I think they dance, come and said, How oh, come I'm, I'm doing like fraud? I said, How oh, can I manage something fraud? And there's no, no money in it to come to him. <laughs> I thought fraud was when they try to teach people money. And you set them up and, and cheat them. I'm offering something free, so where's the fraud? Write it down for me and show me where the fraud. So I tell her, she's not qualified. She must go to language training centre. And she must leave now. That ran for several years. One year continuously. Conversation in Spanish. Conversation in Amharic. Got another guy from Ethiopia. Beck Kelly. Who was here trying to work his way out to get to the US for several years. And he taught that free. A lot of the bastards came. Others came and go on and go on until they built the full Amharic and then stopped coming. <laughs> So that was how that came to, you know, it's end after so many years. But the language of Swahili, which is popular all on the eastern coast, Tanzania, Kenya, da, da, da. Ethiopia, the single language Amharic, A-M-H-E-R-I-C. With Nigeria, I'll have a meeting with the ambassador, because they have many languages, for them to recommend which language they like because we can take up two or three languages from Nigeria. One dominant popular language is what we are from. And get the Nigerian High Commission to put some money and put some other things behind it. I think they said the Hausa. Yes, the Hausa okay. language is the most. Yeah. In fact, they said most the is the most spoken language in Africa, not just in Nigeria. Okay, okay. South Africa, South Africa. South Africa. South Africa. So we'll have to talk to the Nigerian I come with, So they decide and we work with them. So if you go there and say we want to speak Yoruba, I will, we're going to do this. They might, because it's also depend on the tribe that the president. No, that's ex yeah, 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 that, That's ex the one that they clicked on. Yeah, that's different from Hausa. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a different language. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
that is on board. So I will be as soon as I get the right signals and the right communication. Myself and quite like the child and well, we'll set a meeting with the Nigeria High Commissioner and negotiate with her. Let them give some formulas that we we we, we we'll prefer to also what you can provide to the course, da 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 da, because it's a community service by you take and it's an ongoing thing. We South Africa the same thing. South Africa about 14 legal languages. 17. 17, all right. So there's no way we're going to get enough Jamaicans who want to learn 17. So we're going to select one and let they advise us which one. All right? Whether it's Mandela Osa or it's a whatever, Zulu or what. And in so doing, we can ask them to. So not right. Mm -hmm. In so doing, we can ask them to look, but you have to put something in the program so as to get credit and get a photo shoot and tell the government that you know they spend one dollar and they get one thousand dollar water value. Da da da. So that is acceptable and waiting to be done. Mm -hmm. My proposal and offer at the conference on Monday, and I want to start it up and see it and then pass it on to who we can confident to run it. Last thing I told them which is a personal protocol mine, which is vertical farming. Vertical farming is your concrete wall that you hang all sorts of pots there and farm. So I want to give them a piece of the action to get involved. The Scientific Research Council, Ed was there, he's impressed, him say more piece of the action. He gave me his card. So I'm going to give him a piece of, the biggest piece of the action he want. But it will be at my home using three different walls. There's a high school from St. Anne, one of the newer ones, I don't remember the name. I was impressed with the teacher and the staff. They came up and I went to bus to do a daily thing at the conference. So I agreed to work with them to get SRC and myself doing a prototype at the school. So they become a specialized organization in vertical farming from the school and extend that outward to where a person who have much horizontal space but it can grow things from their backyard and in. As well as drip irrigation, no offer coming in because we catch all the water, put the tank and then pump it and use the computer to decide when you pump it how much and shut down. Because you're not going to get people to use a bucket or a span to go water it properly and wet. So that must come in. As well as I'm planning to use solar electric collector to drive solar pumps. So JPS won't interfere with me if it them no. So it can pump continuously. And the benefit of UTEC now, I can use it as an experimental product for UTEC students from One question. So what age group would we teach people the language? Whether so we is UTEC is going yeah, to yeah, yeah. UTEC teaching. Yeah, yeah. No, you can can I tell you one thing? Sir? Can categorize proof it. Well they will work and I think you start like high school years all the way up to university. But the best is for anyone to learn language is from any womb as the baby come out. My son has a daughter, his first daughter, with a fine lady from Madagascar. She speaks three languages, English, French, and Madagascar. And before the baby comes out of the womb, she has been teaching the baby words in French and in English. When the baby arrives, first thing here, bonjour, welcome. The baby don't know that language. But the baby understand this word mean that. And the baby tell him, Brother Miguel Lawn is famous. See me here. The baby will know Brother Miguel Lawn. So, and that child has been learning two languages and don't even know which language is learning. Because that's the ideal and the easiest time to get teach. Give me a child till he's six years old, I can manipulate him, brainwash him. That is a hell thing to get out of that further up. That's what British colonialism and generalship has done. Right? That massive miseducation using Sunday school, using government school, and all that, and turn against yourself. Right? It works, it works. Whether you're going to do it to a dog, a cat, or a human. Right? Few people like the Marcus Garvey or Miguel Long can untangle themselves from it. The rest of us go along. Right? This is how it works. And presently, my son's daughter is going to a Montessori school in Toronto because they have a better system of basic school teaching 
busy school, this and that, than any other government or the other private one. And that per semester is more money he has to pay than if that child was older than the university. But you can't take any chance at that young age. That young age, the basic school, primary and the high school is critical. So any comment from the floor or the head table? But this is what I want to get up and going. And the vertical farming, I'll be the first in the country to do it. And I hope SRC, as I said, they'll come, they'll come on board because with SRC name, they can attract some money that I can attract to help reduce how much money I have to spend. And I said it can be um, used as an ongoing project by students at you take the building department or the architect department to see a functional vertical farming project. It also has inner city potential. Where you don't even have a wall in a city. You can't set up a, uh, a you know, just like you, you put a swing, you use scrap metal and they hang them things from it. Right? What is good to an approach like that? The five gallon water bottle. They bust up every so often the kind of material and crack this and that, so you can't use. That is what I am getting from literally free. I was cut off the top, I have a big container that if I buy that as a made to, 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 to design uh, uh, um, as a, 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 from the plant shop is 2,000, 3,000 photo. So I'm recycling that. I will get top soil, put it, enrich it, as well as I can get top, I can get grass, dry grass, put on top. All of that. So, excuse me, you cut the bottom? No, no, no. You cut the top to open it up. The yeah. bottom will leave there. If this yeah. is it, all I'll do is put like three little holes at the side yeah. to allow. Right? I don't cut the bottom. You, you don't put any hole in the bottom? No, no. no uh -uh. The water? No, it, it comes so there's a, a darkness so far, of trenches up our fortune, mm -hmm. and the excess comes to this hole inside. Oh. When you cut, when you put one in the bottom, you waste it towards the water. Oh. You have to use a, like a sauce to cast it and go back. And the bottom, let me give you a joke, uh, that will be a woman canteen. <laughs> so, the best one is on the side. Right. Something I've done over well, there. Well, I may try it. But get the, get the five gallon. Yeah. Bat right? Bat if you can, because there are, I went to peak manufacturing, you no know, catching peak. All of them, but they're one of the bigger ones. I went there, I've seen this was a call back, but I don't know. You know, they usually couldn't care less. But they, a lot, every year, all of them have to throw away so much. Yeah. Right. There's a place on Linux where I know that they get them, and all they're going to do is cut it up, send it overseas. That is peanut waste. Yeah. If we can find use so, for it, then we can really get some of it. So, I think we need to close off now, but I mean, like, could you say a prayer for us to see us off and all the Jamaican people being blessed and all the plants in Jamaica being blessed by your prayer. Give thanks. How good and pleasant is it is when brethren and sisters come together, when the most ties are so there. And we'd like to send out a prayer as the Honorable Marcus Giave said if the white man want to pray to a white god so be it but i and i as an african must see god through the eyes of ethiopia and this is one of the things that we want to reinforce into our brethren that we must reclaim our african identity this is one of the things that is so alien to us when we pray and we we'll think of a god as they try to force upon us this white jesus we want to reinforce our African identity as African people. And in this prayer, I'd want to call on the great God to guide us all on our respective journey home. And as the African family, would want to lift us up that we can have that unity of purpose that has been eluding us for so long. The many lies that have been told to us that make some of us have lost our way. We have been divided through politics, religion, and other devious means of division. 
I call on the great motto of the Honorable Marcus Garvey, one God, one aim, one destiny, Africa, for the Africans, those at home and those abroad. Blessed love. Thank you. To be content and then we finish. Eternal Father, bless our land. Guide us with thy mighty hands. Keep us free from evil powers. Be our light through countless hours. To our leaders, great defenders, grant true wisdom from above. Justice, truth be ours forever, Jamaica, land we love. Jamaica, 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 land we love. Teach us true respect for all, stir response to duty's call. Strengthen us the weak to perish. Give us vision lest we perish. Knowledge send us, Heavenly Father. Grant true wisdom from above. Justice, truth, be ours forever. Jamaica, land we love. Jamaica. Jamaica, Jamaica, land we love. God bless us all on all plants that grow in this country. Thank you all. Bless them.